Hey everyone, so welcome back. I hope we're all doing really, really well. I hope everybody out there is good. And today we are gonna be playing with makeup. I felt so inspired over the last few days with clearing out my makeup collection. If you haven't seen me go and do that yet, I'll link up here, that was my last video. Seeing all the products that actually were there to play with, so I kind of felt quite inspired to sit down and film some beauty looks. And uh, this is not to say that I have been wearing makeup on a day-to-day -day basis because I have not. Um, it's very much been a 80-20 ratio as to whether I'm actually wearing anything on my face. It's good though, it's letting my skin breathe. I feel like now is the time for skincare. But I did do uh, this actual makeup look that I'm going to show you today on the weekend and I loved it. It's simple, minimal, it's got my name all over it, but it's very, very glowy and fresh and spring summer and at the moment I feel like because we're all indoors spring's kind of trying to peek through the clouds although it's kind of clocked out for today but it just makes me want to wear all this like creamy glowy fresh looking makeup now my skin is looking a little bit lackluster at the moment we don't have a lot of warmth going on the sun has not touched this face for quite a while but who needs sun damage and uv rays when we have makeup to cheat it all. So today I'm kind of doing like a very glowy, sun-kissed, uh, golden, bronzy makeup. And this is my kind of minimal take on that. Okay, so let's just hop straight into this. I've got a little concoction going on for my base. This is a recipe of my own. Two products that I love and when mixed together, even better. The first is the Becca Backlit Priming Filter. I had this for such a long time and it, it really took me a while to start using it. And when I did, oh my god, it's it's amazing. Such a radiant base. It can basically make any foundation look glowy. And the Shantikai Radiance Gel Bronzer, I use that all the time, mainly for bronzing up my skin, but also it's so great in mixing in with other products because it's quite a thin consistency. So I'm gonna do two pumps of the Becca primer, a little squirty squirt of the bronzer mix those two together and this is gonna be my kind of priming base layer. And I don't often use primers, but when they do something, like this Becca one, so they're not just for, you know, keeping your makeup in place and setting, that is when, for me, they're kind of worth the extra time and effort. So I am just gonna blend this all in. It doesn't really have as much impact once it's blended in, which is nice, it's a more of a subtle glow. Although the Becca priming filter is so, so sheeny. It really, oh, it really is intense. Absolutely love it. Okay, glowing skin step one complete. I already feel like there was so much more life back in my face. So you can basically at this point use whatever base you like, as long as it's not too heavy and too matte, because we want to see your skin. You have great skin. Let it shine through. I am going to just pick up my normal, my go-to base, which is the NARS. I always forget the name of this. Is it written here? Yes. Tinted Glow Booster. This is the absolute lowest on the spectrum of their uh, coverages when it comes to bases. NARS go all the way up. I mean, you can get some real full coverage situations there. And this one is, I mean, it kind of even doesn't cover at all. And I'm really not selling this product by saying that, but it gives just that little something. It evens out your base more than anything um, and makes your skin look really uniform. And then you have the perfect like canvas for everything else to go on top of. When it says Glow Booster, it really does mean it. There's no actual kind of shimmer particles, anything like that in this, but it just makes your skin glow. It's very hydrating. So it's a good one if you have dry skin. Um, but at the same time, I think any skin type could use this because it's not really heavy. It doesn't leave like greasiness to the point where it's just too much. I just have not stopped using this since I got it. So it is definitely a fave for me and basically works with any makeup look I try it with. So that is why we're putting this on again today. So at this point, I'm just kind of going along with my normal steps, just trying to get my base the way I like it and that I'm happy with, and, and then I can go on with the rest of the products I'm using. So a little bit of concealer, Glossier Stretch Concealer, as always. The thing I like most about this concealer, and the reason I go on about it so very much, is that you really can take it to such a full coverage. You can use a sponge like this and really pack it on, and that's what I do underneath my eyes where I need it and then you can just use your fingers, you can sheer it out, and it just gives a really light and subtle wash. So it's actually one of Glossier's, I think, most 
versatile products and I think one that you can use on any type of skin whether you want a lot of coverage or or not. Now for the fun part and actually the main product I think in this entire uh, look and, and the reason I did it in the first place I wanted to try this out and I was kind of playing with how to use it and I love it. So it's from Nude Sticks. I'm really having a bit of a Nude Sticks moment right now. I'm enjoying all the products that I try from them. These though, I think are the best products they do. And they have quite a huge shade range to choose from. And they're the Nudies Matte all over sticks. So I have a blusher in this, and this is actually a bronzer. When I got this, I actually unboxed it in a video. I thought it would be way too red, but actually this ready kind of brick bronzer tone looks so natural it looks so much more like your skin has just caught a bit of sun bronzer sticks in general are amazing products uh this one in particular just shines to me though so i'm gonna be quite liberal with this and it's gonna look a bit scary for a while i am gonna put it all along the high points of my face i'm gonna put it on my eyes i'm gonna put it mostly on my tops of my cheeks i'm gonna put it in a little v just down here a little bit on my chin and then I'll probably do some on my neck too. When I blend this in, I do actually always start on the neck and my tip for this is that if you've used the same brush for foundation, you kind of have a little bit of product still left in there and these big kind of areas like the neck where you want to sheer it out and make it quite even in tone, it's really great for that because that little bit of foundation that's still in the brush just really helps to blend that out. So don't tell me I never taught you anything, guys. <laughs> that is a tip for you. When I blend out my cheeks, I kind of stipple it as I go because I don't want to move the product around too much. Um, so I kind of stipple and buff, stipple and buff and just blend, 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 blend. And because I haven't set my makeup or powdered yet, it's really gonna just mesh and gel with all of that base product under there. Thank you, neighbor, for taking the bins out right now. <laughs> um, and really kind of look like it's all blended together and like you haven't purposely put it there. So now that's all blended out, I am gonna reinforce this kind of like sun-kissed look even more with what you guys know is my favorite thing to do with makeup and that is to use a little faux freckle tint. This again is just gonna look like you've been in the sun for weeks and all your freckles are coming out. If you already have freckles, obviously you can skip this step and I will be eternally jealous of you. Freckles are just, just my favorite thing. Uh, I remember when I first started seeing Joe who has freckles all over his entire face for the whole year as well. They never actually go away. I just used to stare at them. <laughs> Probably totally creeped him out, but I would spend just hours looking at his face. He always makes fun of me when I do this as well because he thinks I'm copying him. And uh, to be fair, I am. <laughs> Can you see the difference that's made? It just almost looks like I've got a bit more bronze going on in this area, which is kind of like the sunglasses tan. Another really quick and easy way to sort of make yourself look a bit more sunkissed than you actually are is to focus on these points here. So I've kind of taken it around the tops of my forehead too. Um, also on my cheekbones here, which is the actual place that I do get freckles the most in summer. So that to me feels a little bit more genuine. But the freckle tint that I'm using is from Lottie London. Uh, I really like this one. It's kind of like the affordable dupe to Freck, which was the original freckle tint, I think, that came onto the market. Um, I have to say, I think I prefer this one because you get way more product in it. And also it's a little bit more watery, so it's so much easier to blend. You don't have to rush to kind of tap it all out um, and then end up with some really dark, very unrealistic looking freckles, which uh, is the problem sometimes with Freck. So I'm gonna take some powder under my eyes because right now this is looking a little bit too bright and reflective. So I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of my favorite Charlotte Tilbury powder on this little brush, which I actually always get questions about. This is from Zoeva and it's a Lux Powder Fusion 134, for those of you wondering. And it's kind of like the perfect shape to just fit right underneath my eye there. It makes powdering so simple and easy because that is pretty much the only place that I want it to go. I'll do a little bit on my chin as well and around my mouth, under my nose, and then that is pretty much it. I'm basically trying to avoid my nose because I want to keep a lot of the sheen from the base product in there. So blush is completely optional with this. I think adding too much of a pink tone, depending on the blusher color you want to use, can sometimes make it look 
too much and, and too overdone. I really wanted to try one of these new NARS blushes though. I know you guys wanted to see them on. So I've picked up this one, which is Illicit. It's a very gorgeous, like matte bronzy tone. So I think it's gonna work well with what we're doing here. So I'm just gonna brush a little bit of this just onto my cheekbones. A little bit down my nose. I'm kind of reinforcing what I did with the bronzer with this. It does have just a slight hint of peach in it, which I think is actually really nice. Okay, let's highlight this bad boy. I'm gonna use my favorite highlighter at the moment, which is the Nude Sticks again. I'm loving Nude Sticks. Magnetic Nude Glimmer in 99% Angel. That's me, guys. Um, this is gonna go down my nose and then on the high points of my cheekbones, a little bit under my brows. I'm gonna probably put highlighter in more places than I normally would because that is the goal of this look. Blend that in again with the same brush. I mean, if you've watched a few of my videos by now, you'll know I basically use this Real Techniques buffing brush for everything and have done for pretty much the last, when did Real Techniques come out? 10 years, eight maybe, something like that. It's been a while, not this same brush. I have replaced it since then, don't worry. Okay, I'm gonna quickly do my brows and then come back to you. I'm using at the moment the Anastasia Brow Pomade, more because I have run out of any other brow products and this is the only thing I have right now. I'm kind of enjoying it. It's very difficult to go, or very easy, should I say, to go uh, heavy handed with this. So I kind of just take a little bit on an angled brush and try to imitate my natural brow hairs. Just spend a little time popping all those in. Sometimes I'll just do a line on the arch to make it a little bit more structured and then pull out the tail a bit more. And that is it pretty much. And we're back. I'm feeling so much better. So eyes next. I'm gonna do something super simple. I'm using one eyeshadow color for this. We're not gonna get carried away here. We're gonna go um, for just a really simple wash of a nice bronze coppery shade. And I feel like that type of color just brings out so much warmth in your skin, especially if you've gone for something quite bronzing with your base. Adding in a copper golden shadow just mm, absolutely pops it. So we're gonna use a shade from the NARS Summer Lights palette. I love this palette so much. I've been using it a ton recently, but today we're gonna use this really gorgeous color, which is called Pepete. I'm gonna get this all over my lid with a flat brush. I never used to be a massive fan of flat brushes and I started using them just to pack on color on my lid and wow, they really do make a difference. So let's get that on there first and then I'm gonna blend that out. I'm gonna take it quite high and try and get it quite soft so that it looks very graduated and natural in there. This is the most important part. Do not skip on going underneath your eye and continuing that shadow all the way around. It's kind of quite a circular shape that I'm going for here. So this is the point where we have the option to put a chocolatey dark brown uh, liner into your waterline and in your lashes. You can skip this step. I have two here that are my favorites for this. The first one is from NARS. It's their Coal Liner. Best eyeliner ever. It just does not budge. This is in the shade Sorrento, which is a really rich chocolate brown. One of my all-time favorite eyeliners. But today I'm gonna use this because this blew me away when I found out it was a thing. Charlotte Tilbury eyeliner in Pillow Talk. We had the lipstick, we had the blush, we had the eye palette, and now we have the eyeliner. And this really is amazing. It's like an almost plummy, rich purple brown. So good. And I've been wanting to use this for a really long time. So I'm kind of smudging this into the roots of my lashes. Not so much that you can see an actual line because I, I don't want it to look like I've got a line there. I just want that color to darken a little bit. And then the same for underneath. You can also do this into your waterline if you have the guts. Oh, that's always the weirdest feeling for me. I don't like it. And then really important, I think whenever you're doing eyeliner like this is to make sure you really blend it out. Otherwise it's gonna be maybe some harsh lines that we don't want. You're gonna be able to see that there's actually liner there. And that is not the goal. We want it to look as if it's just naturally great. Last step on the eyes, curl lashes, mascara, Chanel eyelash colors by Terry, lash expert, twist brush mascara. I did my lips off camera as well because 
we all knew it was going to happen. I honestly swear that I tried several different lipsticks on the back of my hand um, to use something different and see if anything else would work, but this is the colour that goes with this look. It just is. So we've got NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in London. Enough said about that, the better. <laughs> Um, I also have a lip liner on today, which I don't usually do, but I kind of fancied it. And I have to say, this is the perfect lip liner for this lip colour. It's from Colourpop. It's one of their lippy pencils in the shade BFF. Isn't that nice? The two of them together, best friends forever. And that is it. That is the look for today. I instantly feel like I should be in the south of France or, you know, on a boat somewhere in Mallorca, sunning myself. Um, that's not the case right now, but that is fine. We have makeup to get us there instead. So I hope you liked watching this if you're bored and stuck at home um, and you want to recreate this makeup look, please tag me on Instagram because it's the, just about the coolest thing ever. You can find me at I Cover the, uh, and tag me on there. That incidentally is the same for all of my social media handles pretty much. I Cover the is just standard in case you were wondering. I am now gonna go and take myself off to a very sunny island in fact. Uh, it's my Animal Crossing island and I'm loving life there right now. So I'm gonna leave you guys here. Thank you so much for watching. Just got very distracted by a guy in uh, the smallest bicycle shorts I've ever seen. It always gets to the end of these videos where I just lose the plot and words start coming out of my mouth that probably shouldn't. But anyway, I hope you guys are all doing really well again. Uh, and I hope these videos that I've been uploading over the last couple of weeks have been a nice place for you to escape. Just making them actually for me has been a way to do that too. Uh, so thank you all so much, so, so much for letting me do that. We got deep there. Okay. Thank you guys. I will see you all again in my next video. Bye-bye.